I'm going to check and see how many oil changes and how much time it takes to remove a small amount of water from our test system right here. Let's take a closer look at it. Our test rig is basically a long roll of small copper flare nutted to a larger inch and one eighth roll of copper. Now the total length of this is a little bit unclear, but it's probably somewhere between 80 and 90 foot long total. So I have this 3 8 vinyl tubing right here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, and this is 5 milliliters of water, a little medicine cup, and I'm going to pour it into this cylinder and see how long it takes to evaporate out so we can actually watch through it. I'm going to connect it in a way where it comes back down to this quarter inch flare, and I'm going to hold it down so we keep our water trapped in this area right here. I'm also going to place a micron gauge here in order to see if we ever reach a substantial vacuum during this process and what the vacuum is compared to how much water we see in this tube. All right, so we have our vacuum pump here. I have it shut off here at the core removal tool, so we'll go ahead and turn the vacuum pump on. For reference, it is 11.24 a.m. in the morning, so we can track it from here. I'll probably let it run about 15, 30 minutes, maybe at the max, and then we'll see if we need to go ahead and change this oil. So let me go ahead and get it started, and we'll take a look at the water to see what happens after we start the pump. <laughs> Releasing the valve core so it'll be open to the system. See what happens to the water. We have our micron gauge right here. It'll probably take quite a while. Nothing's happening to the water yet. Last time it started boiling off immediately, but this time it's not going to because it's at the far reaches of the system. So it'll be really interesting to see how long it takes for this to start boiling off. So it's only been a couple minutes, but you can see there's a lot of bubbles forming in the water. So it'll be interesting to see if these bubbles evaporate out or somehow creates ice in this little dip right here. But we're going to be drawing from both sides, through so this tube and the far side of the tube over here. So there's two openings to draw through, so it should be a little bit quicker than if it was just trapped at a dead end in the system. So it's been running for about 20 minutes or so, 20-25 minutes. and. There's bubbling in the water. The pump oil is not milky or anything like that yet, so it's more slowly paced than our previous experiments. I don't think we have anything on the micron gauge yet. Yep, we have nothing on the micron gauge so far. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it a more substantial period of time, like maybe an hour or something like that, just to see if we get a little bit more action here if there were any ice forms or anything like that. So I'm going to go make myself some lunch, make the wife some lunch, and then when I come back, we'll check in and see if there's been any significant progress. Guys and gals, it's been about two hours now, and we still have a little bit of mist coming from the oil uh, exhaust here. We have open line on the micron gauge, and let's take a look down at the amount of water we have. I really can't tell the difference. Maybe you guys can the amount of water looks about the same to me, although some of the bubbles are disappearing. I don't see as many bubbles, so that kind of tells me that perhaps we need to go ahead and change that vacuum pump oil. So let's take a look at the oil reservoir and see what it looks like. So looking at the oil reservoir, it doesn't look that bad. So it, you wouldn't think to change it unless you were, I guess, testing the ultimate vacuum, but we're going to go ahead and change it anyway because I want to make sure that we have some fresh oil in there so we can make sure we get as much water out of here as possible. Judging from the amount of water we have here, we might have to cap it off and just say we're going to go X amount of time and see how much water is left because I don't see a big difference. First, we're going to shut our ball valve off, separate the system, and then we're going to go ahead and shut the pump down. Give it a little bit of a break for right now. We're going to undo Lefty Lucy Righty tidy. Yep. There we go. Pretty cool looking. So 
Something doesn't smell good. Run a little bit through it. You gotta be kidding me. Okay, we're gonna turn it back on, let it rip, and see how well we do with another one or two hours of runtime. So this test has been going several hours. In fact, it is almost 7 p.m., which means we've been going for roughly eight hours or so, almost eight hours. And the oil now looks pretty good in this thing still after that first oil change. Let's take a closer look at the oil and the micron gauges that I put on the system. As you can see, the oil still looks pretty clear. I'm probably going to change it again just to, I don't know, cover my tracks and make sure we have the best possible moisture removal. But it looks pretty good. I wouldn't think too much ill of this oil just looking at it from a distance. Let's take a look at the micron gauges. I've set one close to the pump and one close to the water column. So it's still liquid for the most part. I have wondered if a couple of little bubbles that I see are actually ice. I'm not positive. We'll find that out whenever I empty this thing out at the end of the test. But the pipe itself, or the vinyl tubing, has collapsed because it's in the vacuum. I still think it's open, but it's not nearly as open as it was at the part of the test when we first started. You can see that it's very thin in this area because of the vacuum that it's in. The Philippines Micron gauge, which is close to the end of the piping and close to the water itself, you see the vinyl tube here, is still on open line, which means the reading is too high. I think above 10,000 microns is where this one starts showing numbers. On the opposite side, near the valve core remover, we have the Yellow Jacket Wide Jack Micron gauge, and it's hovering around 8,600 microns, and is not really getting below that much at all. That might be due to the vinyl tubing connection, the moisture in the pipe, I'm not positive but we are below 10,000 on the pump end. I'm gonna change the oil and hope that improves the vacuum, but until then, we're just gonna let it run. I'm gonna change the oil, let it run for a while. I might come out here one more time before I go to bed just to check on it, but this might take quite a while to get all the water out of this thing. So I'll be interested to see how long it takes. I switched pumps so that uh, we could try to step it up a little bit. This is the Yellow Jacket Bullet DC with 3 8 vacuum hose. Well, this vacuum pump and the Harbor Freight vacuum pump have been running for over 24 hours collectively. There's still water in the tube. It hasn't removed all the water. I've changed the oil two or three times, I think twice. I've used all the vacuum pump oil I had left to make sure we had the best possible oil. The oil doesn't look all that foul in this vacuum pump. It's not too bad. Let's take a closer look and I'll show you what I mean. So you can kind of see, you can't make it out as well here, but it is looking kind of milky up here at the top. This is oil in here. It's kind of hard to tell at this angle, but this is full of oil. It just looks very clear for some reason on this picture. We're going to go ahead and measure how much of this water is left. I'm going to section off the vacuum section. Okay, so let's take a look at how much water is left. I had to put some of these clamps on here to try to keep the tubing as open as possible. So we had the highest possible transmission through it because as soon as the vacuum got to the higher stages, it wanted to collapse. From here to here is water. I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do to make this easy, I'm just gonna cut these off with snips. If 
oh, sucking stuff in. Got to be careful. It sucked kind of around the corner there. Almost drew some of the water out of the tube. All right. So there's our tube of water. Maybe there's not as much as I thought there was. It's kind of interesting. Unless it got sucked out of that tube just now, there's not much left. Just a little bit of water. So I'm not sure though. I might have to open this tube up eventually, but it looks like it got most of the water according to that thing. I have to review the footage. Oh, sucking stuff in. But okay, that's the result after a few days right there. So this is what was left. I'll give you a close-up look here. Just about everything looks like. It didn't remove hardly anything. What's the deal with that? Maybe it's the vacuum pump oil. I find that hard to believe it couldn't remove anything. None at all. Maybe it was the level of vacuum because we have this vinyl tubing here, which is not going to pull down to the 500 microns, probably. Uh, although, maybe we should check that. Maybe we should try to confirm that. Maybe that's a test I can do in the future. But what do you guys think was the cause of it not getting any moisture out of the system as far as water, actual water evaporating? Maybe it was the system itself. It was flawed. I don't know. It would look like it was evaporating and boiling off when we had the small cup where the vacuum could pull rapidly, but this one didn't seem to work nearly as well. So it could be just our testing rig we set up. That's what I'm leaning towards, but I wanna know what you think. Comment below, subscribe if you like the video. If you wanna support the channel, there's ways to do that in the description, including a subscribe star, liking the video, subscribing, all that good stuff. My name is Zach Sciotta with the HVAC Shop Talk Podcast, and I'll see you on the next one.